what's going on guys new to this vlogging stuff um but thought i'd try it out got a lot of stuff going on normally and thought it'd be cool to get some on camera and um share with you guys what i'm doing what i'm trying to do a uh, bunch of car stuff car related things going on trying to flip cars, part out cars. I got the drift car project going on. Uh, I've been going to Lock City with the homies, um, trying to get to every event, getting out there, getting some seat time. Um, I got the girlfriend's car, her Miata. We're working on that every now and then. So I thought I would start filming and sharing some content and um, show you guys what we got going on. So I'll give a Give a quick rundown of the cars that we got. So here is the 89 S13 hatch. This is the main drift car. Got single cam turbo set up, running on a mega squirt ECU. Pretty basic, running 16 pounds of boost right now on pump gas kind of scary so I do have this flex fuel sensor for it GM brand uh, GM style continental brand um, so it has these fittings that go on each side you run it to the return line and then it's got the pigtail here run it to the mega squirt and then you can pick up the um, ethanol content through that uh, we'll probably do that in a later video installing that getting that set up testing it out um, I did actually recently get the uh, Dieseworks 800cc injectors, which are E85 compatible. So we'll do that in a later video. But yeah, I just wanted to show you the setup here, what's going on. It's a good car. Gets the job done. We just went to Lock City this Saturday. I'll throw up some clips here. <laughs> did do the backtrack for the first time which is kind of like uh, it wraps around the whole track kind of it's like the back section and normally clubhouse skid pad I'm running second gear you know hitting limiter the whole time but on the back section you got to run third gear because it's faster and never done that before and it was it was wild but it was a great time once I got the hang of it definitely terrifying but amazing once you figure it out and you kind of just got to send it you can't second guess it you just gotta go full speed and keep it going and it's a great it's a blast so in this video we're gonna focus on pulling the engine in trans out of this mark 3 jetta here this is a car that i picked up from a buddy i did plan on buying this car to swap the engine in trans into the pickup truck here kind of lost interest with it you know I got the drift car and that just kind of took up all my time so now I'm just parting out the car selling everything on it so if you guys need any more three parts let me know um, but in this video we're gonna pull the engine and trans out so I can get ready to sell that um, it's not really officially sold yet but I thought I'd get it out just in case someone wants it. I know someone will buy it. I've had a couple people hit me up asking me prices and whatnot. So I figured we'll get it ready, get it out of the car and into the garage. So then also I, I don't have to keep putting this tarp on and off. I just leave the tarp off once the engine's out, pull the battery out and whatnot, the harness and everything. And then, yeah, be ready to sell. So first things first, I want to pull the car up a little bit and use the truck to just pull it forward a little because I want to get it onto the driveway here so that when I have the engine hoist I can 
slide it around easy because back there it's on the grass. All right. Get her back in gear. All right, so I got my nice little workstation here. A couple tools, sockets, um, drain buckets. I think first thing that we're going to do, pull the bumper off. Um, get that out of the way and I'm pretty sure these front clips come off um, I've actually never pulled an engine on a mark 3 before I know all the newer Volkswagens are that way but yeah we'll try that so first I guess we got some emails, 10 mils down here Let's get these off Oh, they got nuts on the bottom. There's the nut for that right there. Alright, so I got the bumper off. Um, so it's these three up top, the bolts with the nuts that I showed you before, and then there's four more of the same, the same ones on the bottom. There's one, two, three, four, five of those. And then there was two uh, Phillips screws down here holding the fender liner to each side. And then after you get all those out, it just slides right out of these brackets here. Um, and then you gotta unplug the lights, obviously. Fog lights and the side markers there. And then it slides right out, just like that. So we got the bumper off now. And um, yeah, it does look like this whole front core comes off. So I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna te keep taking bolts out and see what happens. Um, got some buckets to drain the fluids in. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll yank her out in no time. All right, so yeah, I got the uh, front core off. Um, so there was those two bolts here on each side. Pop those out and then there was the harness, um, this wire harness, kind of ran through the top of it. It had a bunch of plastic clips that you just pop those out. Um, so get that harness free from it. And then two bolts here and popped off the hood latch to get the cable out and then ran the cable through the, hook, uh, the hole there, pulled the cable out. And then two bolts there, two bolts here, and, and yeah, it just popped off. And uh, yeah, now got to get the radiator and the AC condenser off and we'll have all that room just to pull this engine and trans just kind of straight out. All right, well, it's 11 o'clock, 11.20. I'm hungry. So I'm going to go to Subway. I'll take you guys in the... Uh, the good old uh, missile here. Take it for a little rip. Yeah. Bag acquired. If you guys can hear me over the squeaking, got some chips too. In the drink. All right, let's go back and get this engine out of this dang Jetta. All right, we're back. Got some Subway. We're full. You guys got to ride in the Death Trap. Um, let's get back to it. Let's start pulling some more bolts out. Try to get this engine out. Um, I am not sure what I'm doing with these. Um, never pulled one of these, but figuring it out. One bolt at a time, you know, keep the going till the thing comes out and then you're like, ah, all done. Yeah, so, um, this is where we're left off. Uh, this gotta come out somehow. Pull the lines off, AC line off. This doesn't have any AC in it because it's been sitting for a while. You know what I'm saying? Don't really, uh, bring it to a shop and have them suck this suck it out with the machine and whatnot you don't want to just let it go in the air because then it like 
kills the ozone layer and whatnot. Uh, but I'm gonna drain the coolant, get these coolant hoses off. Um, bottom AC line down there. Should be another coolant hose. Yep, down there at the bottom. And then that should come off. And then we can keep going and pour more, more stuff off. All right, I'll let you know when uh, that's off. Okay, bye. So, radiator and condenser are now off. The condenser, I couldn't get this part out of the condenser that goes uh, this way, so it broke. So the condenser is deemed bad. Can't sell that anymore. Um, but radiator's still good. That came out. Uh, drain the coolant from the bottom hose here uh, into the bucket there. Pop the top one off, and then there's two 10 mils on each side of the radiator, and that thing pops right off. And yeah, so that's out of the way now. Uh, now what? I guess I just start pulling stuff off that looks like it is in the way for engine and trans to come out. So I'm going to keep pulling stuff out and I will keep you guys updated. Okay, so another update here. What did I do? So I, I put the, I took the AC lines off of the compressor here. It was just this big Allen head bolt. Um, and then both lines came off the other one I took off and then the one that runs still on the body that you're gonna leave I just zip tied up here Against the fender there. I took the air box out. It had the connector for the MAF um, a couple vacuum lines on it and then down at the bottom there was just some rubber band type things holding the box on and then it pulled out um, This was connected to it as well I think it's dark. I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, yeah. So this was also on the airbox. You just pull it off. It was like this rubber piece holding it on. Um, I took the fuel lines off. Right there. Feed and return. I took the battery and the battery tray out. So the battery tray was held in by four uh, 10 mil bolts. And that came out. Uh, I took the power steering reservoir off. The engine harness was just this guy right here going into there so that just unscrews off and pops off and then all the other connectors going to the trans and the starter stuff um, is also attached but I just leave that over to the side all of these stay there yeah that is what I've done so far so now I'm going to take more stuff off get the shifter cable coolant line going to the bottle this coolant line here um, some vacuum stuff heater core lines uh, yeah and then we move to the fun parts of pulling the axles and probably cutting the exhaust off yes so that's where I've left off and I will keep going and I'll let you know when I've done more so quick update here I was taking off the clutch cable um, this part was a bit tricky so normally there's like this tool that sits up here and so you have to pull hold the cable and then you pull this piece up and this piece moves up that way and then that tool hooks into these uh, two side pieces right here hooks into there and then holds this piece up so that you have a bunch of cable so then you can slide the bottom you slide this piece off of uh, the ball seat on the bottom of the cable and the cable will come out but if you don't have that tool this is what I did I put a zip tie Put one zip tie here around the cable and then I put two zip ties going through that zip tie and then had them looping around uh, that part there and then I was able to pull this all the way up and then tighten the zip ties so then it 
held it up there and then I was able to get the piece off and yeah so now that's out so that's how you do that if um, you don't have the special tool what up so got some updates pulled the throttle cable off uh, there's a little clip right here holding that in and then you pop the rubber piece out and then you can feed it off of the throttle body there pulled this ground off of the valve cover pulled the heater core lines off uh, this vacuum line going to the brake booster power steering line I ended up just cutting it because uh, don't give a shit. same with that one down there the shifter linkages this guy right here went to this boy. It had a little uh, cotter pin in there. Popped the cotter pin out. That comes out. And then there's another one back here somewhere. Don't know where, but it went to this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little ball there on the pivot. Pop that off. Both of those come off and then you're good. Um, what else did I do? I think that was it. Oh, um, popped the line off of um, the coil going to the distributor. Just tuck that there. And I think that was it. So now I am going to work on pulling the axles out and then, yeah, I took uh, this motor mount bolt out just because I was bored and it was right there. So that one comes out and then there's two in the back and then one on the trans over here. Pull all that out and then she can just me come on right out. <coughs> Goddamn. I will uh, get back to you when I have more stuff out. All right, so uh, we're getting some sh done here. I just got the axles. I got that one out, the driver's side, but the passenger side, the uh, bolts on the bottom of the control arm uh, are just spinning, and it has the piece that sits on top, the little triangle piece with the welded pieces, and they're just spinning, and yeah, I'm not gonna fuck with that, so. Um, the axle's unbolted from the trans, so I'm thinking I could just pull it out and then the axle will fall down and stay there. Um, so now I just have to get the engine mounts out. So there's this front one, and then there's one there, and then one on that side. There isn't one over here. I thought there was, but there isn't. So there's just that one, and then that one, total of three. Um, once those are out, uh, Actually, I still have to, I'm going to cut the exhaust like right before the cat, so I have to go buy a Sawzall. But when I do that, cut it, she'll be ready to, to Yankee Doodle, so um, I'm going to go buy a Sawzall, so I'll be right back. So I just got the, uh, I just got the bag from the Home D. Home D got the bag, so um, we better go back to the house. We got the final piece to the the, the, the the final piece to the puzzle, and now we can cut the exhaust off and pull this engine out once and for all. Okay, I'll see you when it's when I cut it. Last blade. Oh my god, dude. What the so we're making some progress. Progress. We're making some progress. Uh, I got the exhaust cut off. Um, I took the engine mount bolts out. Two in the back. I had the one in the front already out. Um, so now we got the heavy duty engine hoist set up with the heavy duty strap and yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna crank her out and see what happens real quick the sun is in my face no the shadows in my face 
So real quick before I pull this out, I did I did remove the the bar coming across here that has the front engine mount on it. It's also um, the radiator support. Um, there's two bolts up here, this bolt here, and then another one further back. Same on the other side, two bolts, and then that whole front bar comes out. Uh, I figured that'd give me more room just to pull the engine and transit straight out. Uh, so let me set it up and we'll give it a go. All right, and just like that, she is a free lady. She is out and about right now. So that's where I uh, cut the exhaust. I cut it behind the cat flange in case someone wanted to uh, reuse this crusty beast. They would just uh, cut these bolts off and then this flange here is still good. But yeah, that is about all it takes apparently to pull that out. I left this axle in because it was giving me a hard time getting the ball joint bolts out. But now I can just get the nut off and pop the axle out like that. And yeah, not terrible. These are cool because the engine harness separated um, from this guy right here, so it made it easy to just leave uh, most of the connectors on the engine. And then this runs to the ECU back inside the car. Yeah, pretty decent. I guess that's it for this video, depending on how long it is uh, after editing and whatnot. Maybe I'll add something else into the video. I do have some other coilovers that I'm gonna put on the 240, just because the ones I have on my car are pretty crusty and the front springs are broken. They're, they're nice brand coilovers, but they're just old and they've lived a good life. So I got some cheapo CX racing ones off a of buddy that are still pretty good. They're still, you can still move the, uh, the collars and whatnot. So maybe that'll be in this video. If not, that'll probably be the next one. Uh, appreciate it for the watching and subscribe and like and stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.